Hello guys, good afternoon. Uh, welcome uh, to the Witness Without Identity. Uh, today I want to talk about the Jeffrey Epstein issue. Uh, there's this young lady um, that was on... on, on uh, uh, she, uh, she, uh, there was a young lady that was on, on the, the Doctor As True Crime. She explained how Jeffrey Epstein recruited, was recruiting her. I want you to listen to her, her story and then we can talk about it. Thank you. Just five days after Jeffrey Epstein's shocking death, attorney Lisa Bloom filed a lawsuit against his estate and multiple possible core conspirators, alleging that Epstein sexually assaulted two young women at his New York City mansion in 2004. One of these women was just 19 at the time of the alleged incident. Until today, she was known only as Jane Doe II. But she's bravely decided to reveal herself and share her story publicly for the very first time. I want to thank you for being here, Kiki. Thank you, Dr. Oz. Lisa, nice to be here. Thank you. as always, pleasure to have you on the show. Pleasure. Kiki, what gave you the strength to come forward today and tell your story? Um, in short, it was all the women who came before me. Um, their strength and courage and bravery um, inspired me tremendously, uh, the support of my family. But I also felt this social and moral responsibility um, as a woman and as a victim and now survivor to do what they did for me and to sort of pay it forward. Good for you, Kiki. Mm -hmm. I know it takes a lot, and that's why I'm so proud that so many are coming forward. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what happened with you. You're 19 years of age. You're in New York City. You've been modeling for five years, mm -hmm. roughly. You're working at a restaurant called The Coffee Shop, mm -hmm. trying to make ends meet. And you're approached by someone who's associated with Jeffrey Epstein. Mm -hmm. What happened? Yes, yeah, so I was a hostess at The Coffee Shop, um, and one day, uh, a woman, a, a young, beautiful woman, uh, probably a few years older than me, walked in and she sort of began to right away endear herself to me. She was very sweet, she was very kind. Uh, she started telling me about uh, her client and who she worked for. She worked for a very generous, wealthy, um, and prominent man. And she had been working for him for a very long time. He was very good to people, he was very generous. He liked to help young girls with their careers. And at that time, uh, the coffee shop was kind of a hunting ground for recruiters because they typically only hired models or aspiring, aspiring actors or models. Mm -hmm. So you had to have a certain um, uh, image, you know. So that was a good place for them to recruit. And, uh, you know, I, had, I was 19. I didn't have any frame of reference at this point, N not to trust someone that seemed very trustworthy. Um, and so she continued to tell me about this job that she might have for me, an opportunity, um, which was to uh, go to this man's house who was very generous, very nice, nice person, nothing bad would happen, uh, and to give him a massage. Um, and I, I thought, okay, well, you know, I, I don't have any massage therapy experience, so that, that was kind of odd, but, you know, and I brought that up with her, and she says, well, he just kind of likes young, young pretty girls. I thought, okay, well, this is New York. Let's, that's not that unusual, right? Um, so after that, uh, we were in contact, and uh, I decided to go ahead with the opportunity, which I thought would, you know, he would be able to help me with my career. He was uh, friends with presidents. He had a lot of ties in the fashion industry, and at that point, I was trying to get back into modeling. I had taken like a year break. Can I and, slow that for one second? Mm -hmm. I'm just curious about this process of of grooming you, mm -hmm. I'll use that phrase. Mm -hmm. So she meets you at the coffee shop. Is that the next conversation is going to his house? Was there anything happening in between? Was, yeah, in between, uh, there was a process of grooming. So she kind of whined and dined me. Um, she wanted to get to know me, to, to get to know who I was. And she... Sorry, did, you, did you have any frame of reference? Was she talking to anybody else at the coffee shop? I, I had no idea, no. So no. you, as far as you, she just picks you out? Yes. Like a hunter looking for prey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and she tells me, you know, one of the things that really st stuck with me that I thought kind of odd at the time, but now makes a lot of sense, um, was, you know, she said, just be sure, just to make sure, you know, if he asks you how old you are, make sure you don't say you're older than 17 or 18, even though I was only 19 at the time. And I said, okay. Um, and of course, at the time, that was... A, unusual but again you know I have no reason to be fearful no reason to see the seem that she was a threat to me or that he would be so I um, walk around the corner 
and I walked to his house and I still remember those big giant doors and um, this maid comes to the door. She answers the door. She takes me to an elevator. I get on the elevator. So you see that uh, basically um, uh, Gillian Maxwell was out there scouting people. And as I mean, but and everybody, I don't know. And I agree with the young lady in Dr. As. She, Gillian Maxwell is not an ugly looking person. You look at her, uh, her demeanor, her pictures, uh, she looks pretty hot. I mean, she's pretty, uh, she's a nice looking woman. So uh, I think Jeffrey Epstein was able to use that for, in his advantage because she's the woman, she's the madam that's going to groom all those young ladies. And she's very attractive. She's very poised. She has a lot of like um, styles. And when she opposed those ladies, those ladies just, they just like, they just, eat, she, she did just believe in what she's saying. And then, and then that, that's how the process work. And, but what was interesting about the conversation is the coffee shop. The coffee shop is a, is a, is a restaurant, I guess, that was hiring a lot of good looking people. And I guess that's why she, she was hunting there. So which means that probably those, the Jeffy Essen people was also hunting models. How, who knows, man? I mean, anything can happen in that world. So this is what I'm saying, guys. So, um, Guys, I, I want to tell you, I, 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 I'm going to go, the, the, uh, you see where I cut off the interview um, is because I want to make a part two and I want you guys to watch the part two because she's going to describe the rest after she gets into the house, what happened. But that's what I want to say, you know, so just watch the part two, guys. And also, please 